Wow. Wow. It is good here, isn't it? Don't you think, though? It is actually good. Because um, I, I have to travel around and I get up in all different kinds of settings and I'm like, wow, this is good here. And I'm normally lying, you know what I mean? It's like, I've got up in some settings where I'm like, oh, this is not good. But it is actually good here. It is a great church. I've loved it. I love that you love laughing. I love that you like to shout out even when... I've not asked for you to shout out. You still get involved. Nice to see you. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, um, I loved the worship this morning. That was amazing, wasn't it? Great to be in the presence of God and just amazing. So no, it's really good. So um, I wanted to kind of just mention a little, tiny little bit of what, what I do um, when I'm traveling around. Um, I get, I've had the opportunity to um, speak in um, lots of different settings. My passion is I want to take the cross to the most unlikely place. Yeah? I'm putting the cross center right in there, right where. Let me, let me quickly tell you how it came about, right? I, was, I went to Bible college. I was at Bible college for three years. And um, kind of then I went to be an assistant minister of a church. And then I became like an itinerant evangelist. And everywhere I was going, I was speaking to Christians. And I was wanting to like uh, be in front of non-Christians. And yet everywhere I was going, it was just church people. And then I, um, my wife booked me in to see a comedian. And I went to see this comedian. And he was very, very funny. And also, he was getting a message out there. He, he wasn't a Christian. He wasn't putting a Christian message out there, but he was putting his life message out there. And God spoke to me in that theater and said, I want you to do that. I want you to do that. And I'm like, God, I, I'm, I'm like a minister's kid. I've been to Bible college. You know, I, off, I, I use humor in my sermons and I used a lot of humor and other stuff. But, you know, I'm like, really? And God's like, no, I want you to do that. And so I did my very first show and it was like in front of 70 people and lots of non-Christians came. And I have to tell you, some of it was hilarious and some of it was horrendous, yeah? Have you ever heard someone trying to be funny and they're not funny? Have you ever, have you ever? You, you definitely have had that, yeah? And, uh, and it's like, oh, I mean, honestly, some moments everyone's laughing. Other moments there was like a synchronized buttock clench, yeah? Where everyone's like, mm, you know what I'm saying? You know, and everyone's like, oh, this is awkward. Um, but, you know, I got towards the end and I, I brought the message of Jesus. And, you know, on that day, five people responded to Jesus, Right? And it was like amazing. My wife was just absolutely like delighted. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. And then I had asked like the senior minister, a man that I really respected, I'd asked him to come and I asked him to like give me some feedback and stuff. And he came like marching to the front. And at the end, he says, Mark, you must never do that again. Who do you think you are? Are you trying to be on TV? You know, go back to preaching. You were horrendous tonight. There were moments that were awkward. Don't ever do this again. And off he marched, yeah? Have you ever had that thing where you're like, thanks for the feedback? Yeah, have you ever had that? <laughs> Someone has just killed you. And off he goes. And then we're driving home and my wife's like driving and she's like saying, Mark, that was amazing tonight. God was moving. Five people responded. And I'm in the car and I said, I'm not doing it again. I'm never doing it again. And she's just like, why? So I told her about this, this great man of God who'd like given me this feedback. And my wife, she went, listen to me, right? You know that, listen to me. I looked up to God and God was like, I would listen to her. Yeah, I would. I would listen to her. God was like, I'm listening to her. So you should listen to her, yeah? She went, Mark, listen to me. She goes, you are doing this again. She goes, it was brilliant. Sure, there were bits in it that were not perfect. Sure, there were bits in it that we need to change and you can work on. 
but she goes, Mark, you got the message out there. It was brilliant. And you know, I did. I did it again, and I started to do it in all these different places. And I remember I went to a place in, called Lincoln in England, and 800 people came, and 150 people responded for Jesus. 150. So amazing. And then what I didn't know was that that man who'd been there on the first night, he was in the crowd. I never saw him. I was doing my stuff. He came at the end. He came right down to see me at the front. And he was like, Mark, that was brilliant. You must keep on doing that. I'm like, oh, as soon as he finishes, I am going to let him have it, yeah? I'm going to tell him, if I'd listened to you, I would never have done it. I was ready to give him it. And God was like, no, 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 Mark. Fingers on lips, don't say anything. He got to the end. He went, this is incredible. You must keep on doing it. Wonderful. And I just went, thank you very much. And he walked off. And now I talk about him all over the world, yeah? I tell a story everywhere I go. So God bless you, sir. So, but you know what I just wanted to inspire you by is that when we step out in faith, when we're like believing God for something, it's not always an easy road. It's not always like everything's sorted. There are bits that we've got to change and make better and try harder. But the thing is, is that if you're passionately doing it for God, God will help you and strengthen you. And so I got the opportunity, because I'm a lad from Edinburgh, and I used to go up into Edinburgh town to see comedians during the thing called the Edinburgh Fringe, yeah? When I was in Australia, someone introduced me and said, Mark has appeared in the Edinburgh Fridge, yeah? That's how they introduced me, the Edinburgh Fridge. It's like, no, no, Edinburgh Fringe, yeah? And it's like the biggest comedy festival in the world. And when I was 15, 16 years old, I used to sit in the crowd and listen to comedians absolutely shredding Christianity, ripping Jesus apart, slagging our faith off. And I sat there as a 15-year-old lad and said, one day I'm going to be on that stage and I am going to lift up the name of Jesus. I'm going to lift his name up. And you know, I'm so excited that the last seven or eight years I've had the chance to do that. And right there, right near the Edinburgh Castle is my venue and it's in amongst all the filth and the garbage and the crud that these comedians are spewing out. There's my venue and there I am talking about the cross, talking about the love of Jesus and I'm, I'm excited about what God's doing. So I just wanted to ask you one thing. If you're maybe somebody who prays, you know, every Thursday, I put out a tiny little prayer email. I keep them really short and just telling people where I am in the world, what I'm doing. If you would be interested in getting that email, then just come and I'll give you one of my cards. Jump on there, get the email, and I'd love the thought of you guys praying for me as I'm in all these settings. Because I get in some crazy places like Belfast, Northern Ireland, a pub, I'm talking about Jesus, and honestly, it gets very hostile, and I need Christians praying for me, because I'm like one of the only Christians in the room, and they're getting a bit agitated as I'm talking about the cross. Amen. And we've got people got my back. I love that. Well, listen, I'm passionate about what I'm going to speak about. I'm wanting to talk from Ephesians chapter 3. If you've got your Bible, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14. Because today, at the end of this talk, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I've got it stirred up in my soul to pray for you today. Whatever it is that you are going through. My friend told me that he is a pastor in England. He did a preach and he called people forward. And he says, I want to pray for you. And basically, the first gentleman, he put his hand on his head and he prayed this passionate prayer. And he said, Mark, when I took my hand off his head, his wig came off in my hand. He got his wig stuck to his hand. So I said, what did you do? Because did you try to get rid of it? He goes, well, I kind of discreetly tried to get rid of it, but it was not coming off. So he had to pray over everyone else with the wig stuck. 
Can you imagine just receiving that man's wiggage on your head? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, listen, I've got that anointing. So if there's any bold people in the room, yeah, you come forward at the end. So Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14. This is what it says. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you today. Paul had three prayers for the Ephesians in this passage. And I want to pray those three things. I want to pray that you would be open to his flow of supernatural strength. I want to pray that God would fill you with his inner power and his inner strength. You see, I am so aware that there's a lot of us in this room that have got big weeks coming up. Tough challenges. I, I, I understand that some of us in this room have got health difficulties or financial problems or relationship issues. That there are some people in the room that have got difficult conversations coming up. I know that some of you have got big work responsibilities, things that are challenging, that are difficult and that are hard. And you know, I would love it if I could come and be that preacher that says that God would just ask you to come now and he's going to just sprinkle his magic dust over you and it's going to make it all easy, yeah? I wish I could come and say that God's got a big magic wand that will make all your difficulties suddenly disappear. But I know that in this room we've got mature Christians and that many of us, we understand that God never promised that our troubles would be taken away. God never promised us that we would not face the cancer scare. God never promised us that we would never ever have challenges in our relationships. But what God has promised us is that he will give us the inner power and the inner strength and the inner energy that we can face all things in Christ Jesus. Amen. That we can face whatever struggle, whatever issue. I want you to know today, my friend, that there is no enemy or obstacle in our lives today that we cannot overcome through Christ. Wow, that there is nothing that is too big for God. There's nothing that is like, oh man, this is going to just absolutely crush me. There are people in here that have got challenging jobs, very challenging weeks ahead. And I need you to understand that God, he can give you that power, that strength, that inner energy that you can face them full on and be victorious in the name of the Lord. Amen. I am, um, I pray that he, out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you. He may strengthen you. I've got some stuff to go back to in the UK. I've got a difficult family situation. My sister, sorry, my, my wife's brother is absolutely... It's a nightmare. If I told you all the details, you'd be like, oh man, what are you meant to do with that? I wish God could give me some 
boom answer, and I'm going back to the UK with this answer. I've chatted to loads of great people while I've been in Australia, and they're all just like, man, that is a difficult situation. But what I am feeling is that God is filling me up with his inner strength and his inner energy that I'm going to go and I'm going to face that challenge full on. I don't have kind of some amazing ABC answer to this complex situation, but what I do have is God's glorious riches strengthen me in the inside. You see, um, I did this um, thing called the Three Peaks in the UK. It's like a challenge where you climb the three biggest mountains in the UK in 24 hours. And uh, it, is, it is excruciating. When you read the website, they say, listen, the best thing for you to do is to have a driver, make sure you've got somebody driving you from one mountain to the next mountain. But we were like kind of a bit macho in our heads. We thought, no, we can do this. We'll do our own driving. And um, it starts in Scotland, in the Scottish mountain, and we were just like flying up that mountain. Because I don't know if you know this, but God is Scottish, yeah? And uh, when I was walking up that mountain, it was like the glorious heavens were opening up for me. It was beautiful. We came down, we get in the car, and then I'm like, oh, no, now I've got to go to England, yeah? And uh, we drove to England and the largest mountain in England. And the aim is to do it in 24 hours. We were so tired. My friend Mike, my friend Nigel and me were doing this together. We're walking up this mountain. And the English mountain is well known. The terrain is difficult. It's a horrendous thing because you're walking up there at 3 a.m. And it's just difficult. It's dark. It's horrible. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you are so tired that the people that are with you, just the way that they breathe annoys you. Have you ever been like that? Do you know what I'm saying? You are so tired that you're like, would you just shut up with the breathing loud thing, yeah? Because it really is winding me up. And we were like, oh, just, oh. And we're just like walking up this mountain. We're bugging each other. And we let look and... Mike says, oh man, it's still a long way to go. And this mountain peak was like still a long way off. And we're looking at it. And we are feeling like, I don't think we can do this. We're not even halfway through this challenge. But we stopped and we had like a food break. And we got all the stuff inside of us. We're eating all this stuff. We're drinking. We're just having a fuel break. And then after 15 minutes, we get standing up and we're like do you know what maybe we could do this now this is the key the mountain top had not changed it had not got any closer the terrain was not any easier but what was different was what was happening inside of us we suddenly had a strength and an energy that was going to be able to get us through this challenge and my friend, you know, you might go from this room today and your circumstance may not be any easier. Your situation may not be any simpler. But actually what has changed is that God has filled you with his inner strength and his inner power. And that you go from here feeling six feet tall and you're like, I can overcome this in the name of Jesus. And my prayer for you, my friend, is that this week you are an overcomer, that you are facing your challenges full on, and that you are winning in the name of the Lord. Ah, oh, I am excited because I'm praying for that strength and power for me, and I want to pray that over you today, that you would have that inner strength, that inner beautiful power and energy from God. The second thing is that I pray that you would be open to his superlative love. How wide, how long, how high and how deep is the love of Christ. That today that you would be open to his superlative love. Powerful, powerful love. 
I am, um, my dad has been working as a minister up in the north of Scotland, just above Aberdeen. And it is freezing there. And basically, there are these beautiful beaches, big white beaches, but nobody ever goes on them because it's so cold. And I love when I go up there walking on these wonderful, glorious, beautiful beaches you can see for miles. So the sand is white. It is incredible. And there's a particular beach that I absolutely love that my dad and me have walked on many times. And then one time I go up and my dad says, oh, Mark, it's a bit of an eyesore. It's, it's so sad what's happened. But basically a few young guys had got a car. They nicked the car. They did a bit of joyriding. And then they drove it on the beach and they set it on fire. And now on this beautiful beach, you've got these big oil scars on the beach. And you've got this horrendous, ugly wreckage. You're walking along the beach and you can see it from far off and it's just horrendous. It looks terrible. It's ugly. And I was like saying to my dad, ah, oh, that is so sad. And we were both coming a little moan and rolling our eyes and what's the world coming to and, you know, all that stuff. And then, you know, the next time I was up there, there was a massive storm. And when there's storms in Scotland, they really go for it. And these waves were massive. And then my dad was like, you've got to come on the beach and see this. And what had happened is that these waves were so big and so powerful in this storm that the waves had actually come crashing onto the beach and had actually lifted up the wreckage and taken the wreckage away. And there was not even a sign that there had been any wreckage there. There wasn't even a scar in the sand. It had taken everything away. It had come and it had waved over the beach and it had taken all the wreckage away and my friend wherever you're sitting right now I speak to your soul and I say you know all of us in this room we've got wreckage we've got brokenness I know what my wreckage is and you know what yours is we've all got brokenness we've all got stuff that maybe we feel ashamed of Maybe you're in this room right now and you know that stuff in your life that you're like, ah, it's so ugly. It's like a scar on my soul. It's like an ugliness on my soul. And there's maybe even someone in the room now saying, Mark, you don't even understand how ugly and how big and how horrible it is. And you know, I've tried to do stuff to get rid of this, but it'll never go. But I want to tell you that the power of the wave of Jesus' forgiveness is that it is so mighty and so powerful that it will pick up any wreckage. It will pick up any brokenness. It will pick up any ruins and it will wash you completely clean. When we were hearing the communion talk a few moments ago, what happened on the cross was that the blood of Jesus, so powerful, so strong, so incredibly wonderful, it will wash you completely clean. Hallelujah. That is the blood of Jesus will wash us completely clean. Now I need you to hear me properly what I'm going to communicate now. I believe in counseling. I've had some counseling in the past myself. I believe in it. So please don't take that message away. But I want you to understand that sometimes God's beautiful, wonderful wave of forgiveness and wave of love can do such a powerful work that in just a few moments, he can wash away all the scars on your soul all the memories and the pain and the marks of your brokenness. And you know, yes, there's a place for counseling, but I also believe that there is a time and a place for the beautiful love of Jesus washing over our souls and taking away even the deepest scar. Amen. Do we still believe this? I believe it. 
that you know I've met people that have had such horrendous scars in their life, things that they should have been in counseling for years, things that they should have been in therapy for decades, and they've come and they've brought it before Jesus, and the wave of forgiveness has washed over them. The beautiful love of Jesus has swamped and washed over them, and everything has been wiped clean in an instant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, I don't know if you can remember um, a, a, a toy or a game that, I mean, you see, I always say this to my kids. My kids are like, Christmas time, they're wanting Apple products. You know, I'm like, when I was a kid, we got Apple. Yeah, we definitely got Apple. Yeah, we got an Apple. Yeah, that's what we got for Christmas. Um, but a toy that we love in the UK, and I don't know if you guys have got it, but like this Etch-a-Sketch for little kids. Yeah, do you remember that? You would draw on some stuff and then you can like wipe it away. Do you remember that? And like one of the worst moments when you're a, a kid is, um, so when you're a dad, is when your kid comes up to you and he's drawn something and you do not have a clue what it is, yeah. And your little boy's there going, Daddy, Daddy, drawn this for you. And you're looking at it and you're like, oh, oh, it's a, it's a rocket. And he's like, no, oh, it's a giraffe. No. And then he's like, daddy, it's you. And you're like, oh, come on. That looks nothing like me, yeah? But you know, there's my little boy having a little go, trying his best. And then he's able to wipe it completely clean. And, you know, I want to say that, you know, there's probably no one in the room that you're deliberately a bad person. And try, but the Bible says all of us are sinners. We've all messed up. And we're having a go, but our go is not good enough. Our go has got mistakes in it. Trying our best is flawed. But we don't stand here in the righteousness of us doing our best. We stand here that Jesus Christ said, I will wipe you completely clean. I will wash you whiter than snow. And you know that Etch-a-Sketch takes it all away and the etch -a -Sketch, the blood of Jesus comes and wipes our hearts clean. And at the end today, I want to give an opportunity that you might be here and you might just have that moment where you're like, do you know what, Lord? Would you come, those waves of forgiveness, and wash, wash my wreckage away in the name of the Lord. And the third thing I want you to be up is I want to pray that you would be open to his supreme power. Open to God's supreme power. I want to remind you today, my friend, that God is awesome. I want to remind you today, my friend, that God is still about doing miracles. That God is still about doing supernatural, powerful, wonderful transformation. That you could come before God today and you could say to God, God, I bring this before you and God could hear your heart and that we could believe today that there could be miracles in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do you still believe this? Do we as church still believe that God moves powerfully and he does incredible miracles? You see, sometimes we get so good and explaining why God's not moving and God's not doing this and God's not healing. And we get a theology and everything around why God doesn't always answer our prayers. And all of that is good. And I'm not knocking any of that. But sometimes we focus so much on that that we forget that God is awesome and that God could do a miracle for you today. I am. Um, really glad that the keyboard player has just started playing quietly in the background lots of churches when I'm preaching the keyboard player suddenly appears and that's like the church's way of saying 
Oh, okay, that's enough, yeah? Let's, uh, let's wrap this up, yeah? Let's, uh, yeah? And I thought that was bad. I thought that was bad when the keyboard player saying, come on, get finished. But now my wife has bought one for home, yeah? She's got a keyboard at home. She's like playing. She's like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. We've heard enough now. She just starts to gently play and she's like, mm. I'm joking. In a moment, in a moment, I'm going to ask us, and I'm going to say, friend, if you feel you've got something that you would love to ask God for, I'm going to ask us that we would stand and I'm going to believe with you that God is going to do something powerful for you. Because, you know, I'm, I'm so bold enough and still crazy enough to believe that God does miracles. God changes situations. God can change something in our moment. Um, when I was about 26 and I was working as an evangelist in the UK, an American church asked me to go out and to do a missions week at their church. And a young guy, Mark Ritchie, this Scottish guy, 26, preaching in this huge American church. And God was really kind and it went very well. And the minister said to me, Mark, on Wednesday, we, we want you to come and we want you to present a few things before our missions board. And we want you to ask for some stuff because we want to partner with what you're doing in the UK. And I am, um, I was a young guy and I, I, I was really like up for it and I was praying my prayers and we did this little thing in, in the UK, this breakfast club and I needed about 250 pounds, which is about 500 Australian dollars. And I, I was like, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to ask. I'm, I, I was like getting bold. I'm like, I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to ask them for it. And then I was, I remember I was outside the missions board just waiting to go in waiting to be asked and this old gentleman he was like an old elder of the church and he was just going past in the corridor and he said to me oh Mark thank you for what you brought on Sunday and I was like wow it was a total honour he goes Mark can I ask you what, what are you going to go in there and ask for and I, and I, and I told him and, and, and he says oh Mark Mark he goes you don't understand this missions board is one of the biggest boards in America. They've got a lot of resources. If you ask for that little thing, they'll give you that. He says, I'm asking you to think a bit bigger and a bit wider. And I was like, really? He goes, you go in there and ask for something big. Well, you know, I went away and I prayed my prayers and I like, was like, God, and I felt, God, we used to do this like um, weekends away with these young people that were unsaved and we would preach the gospel and it, it, I budgeted it out that it would cost about 10,000 English pounds, 20,000 Australian uh, dollars and I, I was like, I'm going to go in and ask for that. And I went into this mission board and they asked me what I was on with and I told them about this and I says, I want to ask you for this 10,000 pounds. And they went and they prayed for a few minutes and they came back and they said, Mark, we would love to give you those that 10,000 pounds. And as a Scottish guy, I stood there and I thought, why did I not ask for 20,000 pounds? Why did I not do that? And you know, in a moment, friend, we're coming before Almighty God. We were coming before the Holy of Holies. We're coming before the glorious God who created the whole earth. Oh, don't my friend come with a tiny little request. Don't come just for a little crumb. Come before God with an audacious prayer. Come before God with something big and something awesome. Come before God and say, Father, I'm believing for this. Would you come and help me? And wow, step back and see what God will do. Hallelujah. 
I know what I'm here asking God for. I know what I'm standing before you and saying, God, would you do this? Would you join with me today? And would you come before God and believe that God would do something big and amazing? Something that'd be like, wow, no one could get the glory for this except the glory of glories, His beautiful name, Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, let's bow our heads in the presence of God. There's every heads bowed and every eyes closed. Just so aware, so aware that there are people in the room. And when I was talking about that wreckage, and talking about that brokenness, and you're like, oh, Mark, I just need to, I just need that wave of God's love to come crashing over my soul. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray a really short and simple prayer. And I'm going to invite you today to pray that prayer after me. Don't say it out loud so people can hear, but pray it in your heart. This is the prayer. Why don't you pray it? Father God, thank you for your love. I'm sorry about my wreckage. I'm sorry about my stuff, my brokenness. Would you come and wash over me? Would your love wash over my soul and wipe me completely clean? I ask this in your holy name. Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, church, in a moment, I'm going to hand back to the leaders. But I've got a prayer inside me today. I've got an audacious prayer inside of me. I'm going to encourage us, the church, that we're going to come before God and that we're going to ask Him for big and great things. Things that only God can do. Things. I'm bringing my situation before God and I'm like, God, would you change something? In an instant, would you change something? I'm asking God for a miracle in the name of Jesus. So church, Christians, everyone that's in this room, I'm going to invite you in a moment that we would stand in the presence of God, that we would raise our hands up to heaven and that we would pray our prayers. Do you know what that prayer request is for you? Do you know that healing that you're looking for? Do you know that life-changing situation? Do you know that moment that needs to turn for you? Don't come to God and ask Him for something little. Let's ask the Holy of Holies for something audacious, something big and something great. So if you feel okay and comfortable with this, why don't you stand in the presence of God right now? And as you stand in God's presence, if you're okay with this and you feel all right, I'm going to ask you that you would raise your hands to heaven, that you would raise your hands before the glorious, holy God the powerful awesome God and as the presence of God is in this place and as we have in our hearts and as we have on our mouths the things that we're asking God for the things that we're calling on God for those dreams that you are crying to Jesus for that healing that you're asking the Lord for that moment that needs to change that the relationship that needs to be turned around that situation that needs to be different oh my God we come before you an awesome and holy God a glorious God holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty and we come before you with our requests and we ask would you move God would you move would you do something powerful would you do something awesome would you do something that oh God only you could get the glory for would you do something oh God that will change the circumstance in the name of Jesus and we will be so careful to give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise in Jesus name amen and amen God bless you church it's been an honor being here God bless Yes.